Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Brian Gaskin. Uh, I'm a defense coordinator at Stebbins High School here in Dayton, Ohio. I uh, want to thank Coach Banster for having me on to do this clinic real quick. Uh, I have a couple other videos on here. Uh, one about defensive line, moving your defensive line to help your linebackers. And then I have a tackle clinic from last year. And then this is another tackle clinic uh, for this year. Um, real quick, just this particular drill set, it's a, it's, it's builds upon each other. The vice drill is really for open field tackling, which we do see a fair bit because we see a lot of screen, like wide screen, stuff like that in our league. So, um, it's really to help our kids learn to work in tandem on a ball carrier and track the near hip and get that uh, near foot up when they're going to tackle somebody. And it's not, um, it's not super complicated. It's, it's a pretty simple rapid fire drill that helps, helps you get a lot of reps in and you can rotate within the square and you can also set up multiple squares. So you, you're, you don't have a lot of downtime. You don't have guys standing around, uh, watching other guys do the drill, you have everybody getting reps in, which is super important, especially with practice time being what it is nowadays and other things that take the, uh, you know, take the kids uh, time away from football. So uh, real quick, uh, this is open field vice tackle drill. Um, <laughs> big thing with this is it helps work your, your guys as a team. They get to learn in tandem instead of just one guy at once. Uh, one guy at a time. Uh, it's a fast drill, get lots of reps, and it can be used with or without pads. And it helps to build trust between the guys so that they know they kind of get a sense of what the other one's doing. Uh, and, you know, that's a big deal with tackling. You don't want guys overrunning or running into their own guy. You you build a, a uh, camaraderie between them. They know kind of this is my job, this is your job. And it, you know, it helps them build that in real time, uh, making tackles. Uh, first drill or the first to set up the drill, you're going to have co four cones set up. It's going to be 10 yards apart. You're going to have, you can have anywhere from eight to 10 yards wide. You know, I, I typically use the hash and you're going to be eight to 10, you know, at the most, you're going to, you're going to be like top of the numbers there. Uh, you don't need a ton of room, but you want enough room where once you get to the second uh, step of the drill, the back can make some moves uh, on the first how we start the drill um this also kind of builds off of the uh, open field tackle drill clinic i did last year so if you go back to view that this builds on top of that because it really kind of the key is the same thing breaking your steps down near foot step to the ball carrier keeping your head on the ball carrier correctly all that stuff so a lot of the same principles but it's just now you're working them in tandem instead of solo now you have the running back at the top your defender, your two defenders down here on e, uh, on either cone. To start out, the running back is just going to run to one of the cones. I'm not going to tell him. He's just going to run to one of the markers here on the field. When he does, he starts that sprint. These two guys are going to sprint also to the cone, making sure to keep the uh, inside shoulder for the outside guy and the outside shoulder for the inside guy so that they're creating a vice. They're keeping that guy in between them. So if he tries to move at all, they can, their head's still on the right side and they're making a good form tackle. So it's just, he's sprinting to the cone, squeezing down, breaking his feet down, squeezing. And he's doing the same thing on a nice 45 degree angle, breaking his feet down. Now, again, he can go to either one and it's the same. It works, you know, he's gonna squeeze here uh, and he would be the straight on guy uh, if he went to the other cone. This is just quick reps. You the ball gets to a guy and you can, like I said, you can rotate between the three, but it's quick reps, pick a cone, go with it. You know, main emphasis, breaking down feet, making sure that they're uh, keeping the ball, uh, the running back in between them and not getting over uh, either too wide or trying to get across his face. And then he can bounce outside where your help is not. Now that's the quick one, uh, quick opening. There's nothing huge to it. Get a feel for what how the drill is going to progress. Now, next uh, sequence, you're going to get the running back same spot, guys here same spot. Now you're going to set cones two to three yards apart. Uh, I prefer three, but 
they're basically going to sprint down um, to the cone. Now he's going to make a cut and these two guys are going to, you know, they're going to be sprinting, trying to keep him in the middle. When he makes a cut, then they adjust. So if he cuts the, if he cuts to the right, then he's going to be the outside guy. He's going to be the inside guy. If he cuts to the left, he's going to be the outside guy. He's going to be the inside guy. But this now brings in the element of spontaneous movement. Now he's not jumping and moving all over the place, but he's doing quick movement and they have to uh, react in real time as the ball carrier makes a decision. Now, these two guys, the key is getting to that cone as fast as possible. So when he sprints forward, they need to do everything they can to beat him to that cone because I want them to have a good solid base. And so when he makes his cut, they can now go either way. If their feet are narrow and they're still getting here, then they're not going to be able to get to the uh, move with the running back as well. And then they might get out of position and may either overrun the tackle or be out of position for when he makes the cut. Uh, they can't get him and send him back inside to his help. So this is the second step of the full uh, of the vice tackle uh, drill. It's, it's just a little more uh, speed involved and more reaction so that your guys are getting real time reaction where they're trying to tackle the ball care. And if there is no pads, you're at least clubbing up and making sure you're in position. Again, they should end with one guy on the outside. If say, if he cuts uh, left again or cuts right, he's going to have his inside shoulder. He's going to have his outside shoulder on the ball carrier and they're going to squeeze the ball carrier, squeeze the air out of the ball carrier. So it has nowhere to cut. Um, and that gets them, these guys used to moving in tandem in open field and learning to, sh you know, come together to make a tackle instead of one guy just taking both of them out and overreacting to a, to a movement. Now, again, you know, all the same keys, all the, you know, running back, he's trying to now move to make a miss. But long story short, it's a nice, simple uh, bump up in intensity for the next step of the drill. Now. The third step that we can start doing more um, like on the fly. So now they won't be looking at the running back at all until they get around the cone. So this one, you set up three cones. They won't be looking at each other, all facing um, out the, you know, at the whistle or hut or however you want to trigger it. The running back takes off around the cone. And at the same time, these guys take off around their cone. And as they're coming back in, they got to get eyes on this running back to find out where he's going. And then again, on the fly, they have to adjust and move so that he stays in between them. And then they're coming together to vice that running back down. So they're going to, he can start making moves anywhere in this plane. So in this box, he can go anywhere he wants. So as soon as he crosses, he can start heading this way. So now when he crosses, he's got a long way to go, but he's got to get there under control. He's got to, you know, get to a certain point pretty fast and then break his feet down so that if he cuts back this way he's then able to cut back with him and he also can cut back in and they can keep that vice going get that running back to stay in between them so that there isn't uh, anywhere for him to go and that's uh you know that's a huge thing having two guys to tackle one because you know you've seen it a thousand times guys think the one guy's gonna make the tackle and so he lets up and then the kid breaks the tackle and he's gone or he's getting extra yardage when you thought he'd be down. So this teaches them to, it's my tackle just as much as the other guy and work together to keep him in a box so that he can't move around and juke and do all this other stuff. They're going to squeeze that ball care so that he has nowhere to go and uh, get him on the ground. Now, with uh, after you've worked through all of the uh, those three steps, um, and again, you're going to take, you know, you, you can maybe on the first day, you're just going to rep the first one to get them used to it. And then on the second day, you add the second step. And then the third step, you know, you, you don't have to, once you get good at it, you can do all three levels in a day, but it's a, you know, it's a good summertime drill. When you just have helmets on, you're going to be able to get, you know, lots of reps and they're going to be getting footwork and learn in open field tackling uh, and working together as a team, which is, a huge thing um, 
on the defensive side of the ball, especially for us, just getting used to working together as a team and uh, tackling well as a team. Now, this one is essentially, I, I call it the make them right drill uh, part of this, but you're going to have the running back here. And again, you got your cones here that he's going to be cutting off of. The difference with this one is I will, uh, once he cuts, he can make another cut. Like he can cut here. And then once he cuts, he can kind of move where he needs. The big difference for this is the first defender, I'll say the first level defender is on the line. The second level defender is going to be on uh, five yards behind him. And they're both turned around. Once the whistle's blown or however you start your drill, uh, but once you blow the whistle, these guys will turn around. He's going to be sprinting towards the cone. He's going to be sprinting towards the cone. He's going to keep up with this guy. The difference is now, once this guy makes his cut and he reacts, now this guy has to make him right. So if he cuts out like this, his natural instinct and what he needs to do is make sure he's getting him turned back in. So when he he's trailing and this guy makes the cut, you know cuts out, he's going to turn him back in. He's got to be there to wrap and fill, right? Now, you want him to also be in there with him, but this is where now you're using the vice, but it's at different levels. So this is like you could do defensive end and safety or defensive end and linebacker. Uh, Cause I know in our four, three, a lot of times our uh, will linebacker and the defensive end to his side, I, his, the will linebackers read is make the defensive end, right? If the defensive end crashes, the will has to make sure he keeps his outside shoulder free if the will runs up the field he's going to have to fill more b gap and squeeze it down so it, this is a good drill to help those guys work together but this is also a linebacker and a safety if you have a linebacker he's going to be closer obviously just by alignment and so the linebacker is going to get there first he's going to do his best to make the tackle but what his main job is to slow him down and then turn him back into the help right so now the safety would be able to come in once he sees the running back make the cut, he's going to get a, he's going to make him move back into his help. And then the safety is there to make a tackle. So it's a good way to get uh, two levels of tackling where they're working in tandem. And cause they're going to be doing that in the game, at least in our scheme and how we do it. But I think most defenses, you have levels to your defense. This helps you get each level an opportunity at working in real time with making the guy right. Um, it's a huge, um, like I said, in our scheme, it's a pretty big deal for our linebackers, defensive ends, but then also for our safeties and linebackers because they're going to, the, the safeties kind of clean up uh, a lot of times where the linebackers uh, turn it back in or they're setting an edge. There's going to be a, uh, a cleanup there. And that, that when you, work in tandem like that it, it's it, it's more natural in the game instead of just you know work and tackling and that's good but you need to be able to work tackling in real game time type uh, scenarios um, I know for us we work a lot of uh, tackle drills especially like stationary ones where we're wrapping and rolling and we're doing kind of step-by-step things but this allows us to get more in game type uh, of tackling movements where you're not just standing still or the ball carriers in a known position. This allows us to get used to uh, reading, uh, you know, tendencies to read the, sh read the hips of the running back, right? Track the near hip and make sure, you know, he ain't going anywhere without the hip. So track the near hip in real time and then come in and make a tackle. Uh, and it, it's given us, you know, it, it's helped us out a lot. And we've, you know, we've been um, fairly solid, like middle of the pack, uh, upper third of the pack uh, in defense in our conference here in Dayton uh, for the last few years. And part of that is because we've been pretty good at tackling and uh, and tackling together. Uh, it's, it's given us a lot of, um, it's given us a lot of, uh, you know, good solid first or third down defense where, we kind of bend, don't bend, but don't break. So when we need to make that tackle in space to make sure when they dump it off or they throw the ball short, 
we're making that tackle for a fourth down instead of giving up the, uh, you know, giving up a broken tackle or a missed tackle for giving them a first down. We, we were trying to make them punt, get the ball back to our offense and let them go to work. Um, now, again, start simple and then it progresses. You know, you can, the, the another good thing about this drill, like I said before, was you can use it with or without pads and it's multiple. You can set up multiple stations. So you're getting lots of reps. You can even set up a station for each step and then work the guys through that way. So um, especially in the summer when there's a lot less maybe form to the practice or even after weightlifting, I know when we do like agilities and stuff, you have kids, you can set up one of the cone sections and you can do this for footwork so that they're getting used to moving to the near hip, tracking the near hip, you know, uh, inside, you know, uh, near foot stepping in for, to make a solid tackle, uh, power step there, and then just uh, getting the getting your head on the right side of the ball carrier on the correct side and keeping the head as much out of the tackle as possible. Um, I know a lot of a, a lot of people are worried about concussions and rightly so with football, but if we can teach them how to keep their head out of the tackle as much as possible, you know, our kids are going to feel a lot more safe and, and maybe even help, uh, uh, help keep some kids, get some kids interested that maybe wouldn't play football before, but um, that's really about it uh, on this clinic guys. And uh, it's a simple tackle drill. It flows pretty fast and it gets your kids lots of reps of real time, uh, real track in the near hip kind of work and just gets them up to speed quickly so that they understand how to tackle in the open field and how to use leverage uh, where their help, you know, leverage where the help is and, and really just make sure tackles and get guys on the ground, create fourth downs and get them punting in the ball back to your offense because defensively that's how we win ball games, get it back to our offense, let them go to work. Uh, other than that, I think, uh, like I said, I thank Coach Banstra. Uh, thank him for the do a tackle clinic and uh, talk ball a little bit. Uh, if you need anything, uh, my name is Brian Gaskin. Uh, my email address is bdgdad at gmail.com. You can email me. I'll be happy to share any knowledge I have or anything about drills or if you have questions on either other two videos I've had. I'm all about sharing and, and spreading the knowledge of the game. And I'm, I'm going to ask you questions as well. I like picking the brains of guys, um, especially guys that have been doing it a while and, and do it differently than others and, and have success doing it. I like uh, getting new ideas and understanding how they see the game and it helps me see the game differently as well. So that's about it from my end. Talk to you later.